So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to walk through sort of the basic blocking for shot one. Let me see if I got the camera sequencer open. Nope. Editor. View. Nope. View. There we go. Got our camera sequencer. So I can look through shot one pretty quickly in the camera sequencer here. And the only thing I really want you to do for shot one is just block in the main poses. So I have sort of the start pose and kind of the end pose. In the middle, what I would probably want you to do is an anticipation. So we could start by grabbing, let's say the head of the lamp, move it down a little bit, maybe over and start the turn. So what we're gonna have is this, right? So it's just basic blocking, just going down and going up. And the first week we're not animating. So what I'll get you to do is once you've blocked in your poses is you'll grab all of the character's controls, go to the graph editor. And right now we have curves connecting all the points. And what we'll do to put it in step mode is click on this icon here, stepped tangents. And what that will do is it will hold the poses. There will be no in-betweens. It basically stops the computer from interpolating from pose to pose. So the default, when you create keys in Maya, it will be an auto tangent everywhere. So it will start interpolating, but we only want to see our poses because again, early on, we have very few ideas in the scene. We haven't refined it. So you just grab all the controls that you're working with. And a good idea is to key the whole character every place you see a key, just so that you've saved the entire pose. Because if you just have keys on, let's say the elbow, the neck, but you didn't key the head, then it's not going to remember that when you go into step mode. And then just make sure everything is in step mode and it just pops through. And then we know at the end of the scene, we need to start preparing. 57 is the last frame of the scene. So what I would do is just have the lamp turn and start to prepare a little bit. It doesn't need to go very far, but the idea is that we're gonna go down and we're gonna head into the next shot. And what I would probably do here, the neck looks a little bit twisted. So I would just pop into my perspective view and move this here. So the idea is we were looking at the lamp and now we're preparing for the jump. Let's say maybe something like that. Going to the camera sequencer, let's go have a look from camera two, right? From camera two's point of view, we need to think about, well, how are we going to have the character jump and where they're going to be? Now, we've already looked from last week how you can go through and pose everything out. So I'm going to show you a different way that I might pre this. One way to um, kind of borrow from the reference is to look at sort of where things start. So let's say I'm going to start the jump. Let's say um, frame nine is when I'm going to start the jump. And then over here I land, let's say, you know, 22. So we could borrow those numbers just to sort of start with. Let's say, all right. Um, so 58 is the first frame of this scene. So that would be 58, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? So eight more, eight more frames. One plus eight would give me this about here set a key, and then the landing was about 20 frames later. It was 22, so that would be 86, would be 20 frames, and then two more would be 88. And again, I'm just guessing. I'm going to fix these later. And what I'll do is I'm just going to grab all three controls, and I'm going to go to a perspective view, and I'm going to move this like a chess piece. I'm just going to move it and let's see if that looks like that might be a good landing spot. And let's have a look from our camera. Okay, if that feels like it's gonna to be too far off to the side, I'll back it off a little bit. So we're just gonna slide across. That's gonna be our first landing. So this is the jump here. Great. And I probably need to hold. If you look at the reference, you can see, you can count one, two, three, four, five, six, six or seven frames on the ground. So I need to block that in, I need that time. So let's say one, two, three, four, five, six, hold there. 
and then I'm going to slide over to the next landing. So I'll look and see how far over. So pretty far over to screen left and a little bit closer. So now what I'll do, and again, how many frames was that? If we look at sort of the jump. So is it 22? And then we land around 38, something like that. So 22, that's about 16 frames. So I'll go here and just count. So let's give me, if I wanted to do 20 frames, that would be 114. And I'll just back that off. One, two, three, four. And again, I'll grab all the controls, hit S, key them, go to my perspective view. And then I'm just gonna drag the lamp over here. Now from this view, I don't know what the camera is gonna see. So I'm, I'm making a guess. It might be that these cones are kind of obscuring the character. So I'll use my camera sequencer and just say, well, what do I see in shot two? So over here and then over here. Yeah, I could be a little bit further over, I think at this point. Let's expand that out there. Yeah, it's a bit far. So I think what I would do here is grab the character. And again, I can't see my manipulators, but I know what I need to do. I just need to slide everything over and then tap over here. So I have my start point. I'm going to land over here. I'm going to land over here. And then I'm going to jump off screen again. So I can go back and count frames and say, okay, well, how many frames did I hold on the ground here? say that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven frames ish. And then how many frames to go from here to here? And about 12 frames. Okay, so let's try that. Let's go back here, hold this for again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then about another 12 frames, something like that. And then we should be off screen, but still moving forward. So I'll go to my perspective view. And the idea is that I'm jumping closer to camera, but I want to be completely off screen. So if I just tap over here, I just want to see where I end up. I want to be completely off screen. So this is zip, zip, zip. So this is a very quick way to previs the character. Let me just hit play here. Look up, zip, zip. Zip. And you can see my graph editor is a bit of a mix, right? So the first shot I put in step mode, but everything else is kind of still in spline, but it's in curves. What I'll usually do is put everything in linear because when you're doing the jumps, what's nice about that is you can just go halfway. So if you know you're going to jump, then you can just go halfway between your landings, kind of go right about here, and then just lift the character up. So I can just lift the character up just to block in the idea of the bounce. It's going to be very angular. It's going to feel like a triangle because I haven't flattened any of these curves. Just to sort of start with the idea of boing, right? I'm going to land. And then over here, I'm going to go up in the air. And I'll sort of figure out how high I want to go. Boing, boing. And then the next one, same thing. And I might jump up even higher here because I really want to get out of frame. So it's just basic blocking. And it feels a little bit slow in some places, but because we don't have all the details, we don't have the squash, we don't have the stretch. This is really just rudimentary. I'm just pre this. And eventually what I'll do is I'll put it all in step mode so that the only thing I see when I'm doing a play blast is a jumping. And you see there's an issue. Look what happened right here. You see how I jump up? right here, but I don't move. So that means I forgot to key something. If you look in the graph editor, you can see there's only a key on one of these curves. Everything else got missed. So let's put it back to linear for everything and see what got missed. And it looks like I missed everything. I probably just keyed one thing. Now I hit S, everything gets keyed. And I go to every single pose, hit S, make sure I see everything. Same thing over here, it's just one key. So now I'm keying everything. And that just locks the position because when I go into step mode, I need those dots. They have to anchor the character. So now I have one, two, three. Okay.
one, two, three. And that just gives my basic timing. Once I have sort of the basic idea in place, sorry, go here, the camera sequence replay, then I would go back and do all the proper posing, just like we did last week. So I would start looking at the jump and I would break that down and say, well, there's my antic. I need my stretch pose. Then I need my high point pose, stretch pose, landing pose. And you can see here, what I'm even doing is I'm using the head of the lamp is arcing around, right? So it's really important to understand drag and overlap. This hits the ground first, that stops first. Two frames later, that's down. This overlaps, it needs more time. And then I use that as a way to sort of follow through and lead your eye into the next jump. Right, so I would have this as a key, stretch pose, full antic pose. Then I might have the stretch pose like that. Then find high point pose, then stretch pose, squash pose, stretch pose, high point, stretch pose. Okay. So just like we did last week for our assignment, find all the keys and block those in. But working this way, just sort of moving everything at once helps you get the character into uh, sort of timed out. It's not perfect, but it lets you test out your ideas. If things feel very slow at this point, then you might want to go back and retime things. But at this point, now at least I have a basic blocking. Now I can go in and adjust everything. So I would figure out my anticipation, my squash and stretch, jump, stretch, squash, jump, stretch, squash, high point. Okay. So working in the top view is very convenient and very sneaky because you can just use all the controls selected together to just move the whole character at once rather than starting with, okay, I got to move the base and I'll move that. And I don't know if that's going to work. And I grab this and I got to move that. And did that work? So you just move the whole character at once, just, just like a chess piece across the chessboard. And you just start with just very simple movements, right? Just from A to B, straight lines zipping across. From a top view, it looks like there's nothing jumping at all. It just goes one, two, three. And then we look in the camera view, then we've got some depth. So for next week, right, what is going to be due is the basic blocking of the lamp. Now for the ball, um, the ball I would keep very simple. Um, again, um, stepped mode works really good when you have a character that's going through very clear identifiable poses. But one of the problems with the ball, if we put that in step mode, it's not going to feel like it's moving, right? It's just going to pop. So it's very confusing. So with the lamp, it makes sense because what we're trying to do is get rid of all the in-betweens that are going to make it slow down or feel like it's not falling properly. All people will focus on is the stuff that's missing, which is the detail. So when we're blocking out the character, usually, you know, poses in step mode work really well. But for the, the, the ball, what we want to do is, as I mentioned, you sort of look at the first frame and we see it. We're going to see this at frame 58. So we need to put the ball on the platform. And then we know that at this frame here where the camera bounces, we have to be here to get the camera shake. So if I go over here and I can see where the ball is, I'll just grab this and move it down. So it's kind of resting on the platform. Not sure how far back it needs to go. So I'll frame one, I'll just leave it here and just key everything. And then I'll go in my camera sequencer and I'll just look for where do I see that camera hit right there. So that's at 81. So that's where I need that thing to be down at the bottom hitting right there on the lower ground plane. So I'll grab the ball and drop it down and it's okay if it's crashing a little bit on the back side of it because we won't see, but we want to avoid, of course, anything that looks like this where we can really see it crashing. So I'm just going to try and see if it, it will kind of make sense that it will be here. And from the camera's point of view, I just want to make sure that it's actually not floating above the ground, but just you know, maybe even pushing into it just slightly. So I'll just look what the camera sees. Okay, right there. That's where we need to be, that point. Great. So I'll just go back, lock in, that's the ball. 
And the ball, I'm gonna make sure that the ball, I want all of this, I don't want any ease in or ease out. I don't want it slowing down. I want it just to be linear. This thing is so big, you wouldn't perceive big changes in its speed. So it's just gonna keep going, right? And then I need to also find where's the last scene, like where's the last frame in my scene that I need to see this thing. So again, I'll go to the camera sequencer, say, where do I have the, the lamp kind of jumping and escaping? Let's say around here. So around here, let's call that 139, 138. Key it and I'm going to move it forward. So I'll jump back, move this forward. And I just need to make sure how forward does it need to go? Probably a lot more than that. Let's grab that and move it closer. There. Okay, let's see how that feels. So it's a bit slow, but again, it's time with the lamp for right now. I'll probably adjust things when I start getting into the posing. The other thing I'll look at here is where does it start? So I know right now, right at this point, it needs to just be lifted up a bit. So it's just on the hill. There we go. And I just want to make sure that it's chasing the lamp, but it's not killing it. I don't want it to go so fast that it intersects the lamp. And I also want to make sure that this thing doesn't slow down, which means I have to go into the graph editor and make sure that anything attached to that ball, right, has to be all straight lines. If I see any curves, it's going to slow down which I don't want. Now I can go here, there. Now the main direction that the ball is moving is probably translate Z. So if I go into my graph editor and look at translate Z, it should be a straight line. And it kind of is, but I could also go here if I grab this point and move it up or down then I'm moving this closer to the camera so it could actually intersect. And if I go to X, I could go here and say, maybe I want that to move over to the side a little bit. And if I don't want it to move in such a straight line, I might sort of, okay, I'll have it start moving a little. So it'll kind of roll. Maybe I want to have this start instead of being right here. Do I want it to be a little bit more there? So it's going to gradually kind of move from the left side of screen more to the right. It's up to me. Right, so I can adjust all these end positions if I want. I cover the camera. But with Z, what I have to be careful of is if you see a big change in the shape of this curve, it's going to feel a lot faster here than over here. So I just want to match that. So one way I can do that is just go to the first point and just move it back a little farther so that when I hit play, it's going to move at the same speed going forward and back. And of course, if I want to, I can grab the timing. I can go grab this key and I could move it a little bit sooner just to speed things up a little bit. I just don't want to kill the lamp. Yeah, it's getting killed right there. So you see, if you move the speed up too much, then you might have a, a couple frames where the lamp gets eaten by the ball. And in step mode, that, that looks funny, but it'll be moving. I just can't risk it right now. So I'll just keep it a little bit slower for the moment. And if I want, I could try to maybe go a little bit closer to camera. Let's try just sort of swallowing the camera up there. But yeah, it kills the lamp. So do the best that you can. Again, it's just early blocking. And I might be, yeah, luckily the lamp escapes. It doesn't get intersected there. It's just a rough guide, right? For the work in progress, I'm not worried about having the ball animation completely done or refined. We can worry about that later. It's just to make sure you have a general idea of the speed. Right, so we want to check with the camera sequencer, have a look at this and see when we turn and look. There it is, it's rolling downhill. And again, I'm working from frame one. It looks like when I cut the camera, this is a lot closer than I want it to be. I really would prefer to see it rolling down the hill a little bit more. It's sort of starting right there. So what I could do is I could delay this and say, well, maybe what we need to do is all this stuff that's happening maybe I could save this. I could just move this over here and just see what happens. So when I'm over here, right, then I can delete this point and just 
trust that the camera sequence is going to help help me figure this out. Yeah, there I need to fix that point. That needs to be further ahead. So unfortunately, I can't change that one. That has to be here. So the only thing I can change is this one. And say, let's just move that a little bit closer. There. Boom. All right. So that's the lamp blocking and the ball blocked in. Again, very basic. What I would expect to see is more detail on the lamp. What I've done here is just basic position. What I would expect to see from you for work in progress is I wanna see every stretch, every squash, right? Change in direction, the landing, just so that it's really clear what's going on, okay? There's a lot of repetition. So hopefully you can copy and paste some poses or at least use them as a guide moving forward. And you also have the finished example to look at. But please make sure, put it into step mode, not the ball, but the lamp. The lamp should be step mode. Stepped for the lamp and linear for the ball. Okay, so go to your scene, grab the lamp controls, make sure they're all in step mode. So you should be able to see no lines, no curves, everything just little staircases. And then for the ball, grab its controls and make sure everything should be 